Hey everybody, I'm Winnipeg Sun Sports Editor Ted Wyman. I'm here with CFL football writer extraordinaire Kirk Benton <laughs> Thanks. to set up the CFL draft for you today. And it's a big day for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers uh, on Tuesday. Uh, they've had some troubles with the draft in recent years. Um, they, they did pretty well the last couple of years, but yep. uh, you know they, they, they always need more, and uh, especially in the Canadian talent department. This is a big draft for Kyle Walters, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, it might even be a bigger one for Mike O'Shea, considering the pressure he will be under this year, how much he has to win and get to the playoffs. Um, the Bombers, though, say that you know they're happy with their Canadian talent. They say they don't need to go after a specific position this year, which is still a little surprising to me. But yeah, Kyle Walters, he has a year and a bit, well, he has two years left on his deal. So he's got a little bit of wiggle room, but these guys take time to develop. So it is big for everybody involved. The Canadian talent has improved, but uh, it's it was badly affected by going back to 2013 yeah. when Joe Mack was still the general manager. They pretty much whiffed on everybody that yeah. year, <laughs> including their second overall pick, Andy Malumbo, who yeah. ended up in the NFL. Um, you know, it got better the last couple of years with Matthias Goosen and, uh, and Suk Chung, yep. who are both going to start on the offensive line this year, so they have to be happy about that. But um, they also used their, uh, their selection of the, in the supplemental draft to take, uh, to take Garrett Wagner last year. And, and that's looking like it's going to be a little costly because he's not really projecting as that kind of an impact player, and they could have had a number two. Right, at least not yet. And, of course, the Bombers will say that he has plenty of time to... To still be that guy, yeah, uh, that's what they're going to say now. But even if you know, even if Garrett Wagner were in this draft, and let's say he was one of the best defensive players available, I don't think you're taking him at number two. So that's that's an issue, that's a mistake. Obviously, the Bombers didn't think they would be that bad last year, but they are. So that's a problem. Yeah, and there are so many offensive linemen available in the in the draft this year. There's a lot. You know, there's six yes. in the top twenty. Uh, of the combine ranking after the combine yeah. and there's uh, you know and, and the Bombers don't pick till ninth because of this situation where yeah. they forfeited their second overall pick yeah. they could miss out on one of those guys and that would be costly because it seems to most of us who are observing that that's really the spot where they need to add another player yeah they have only five players under contract or five four or five players under contract on the offensive line they say they're gonna start three I'm talking about all Canadians here forget disregard imports at this time of year yeah uh, so they need it there if they want to start three. There's no question about it. They need the depth. There's always going to be injuries on the offensive line. So they need that. But Kyle Walter says he doesn't need to do it because he claims they have 10 spots at which Canadians could start. So yeah. if they don't, if they don't have an O-lineman there at 9 and 10, and they say, okay, we're just going to pick the best player available, and it's a receiver and a defensive lineman, then that's, that has potential racial implications where the Bombers, if they run into injury problems later in the year, yeah. might have to go to three imports on the offensive line. So they're playing with a little bit of fire here. Yeah. Uh, they're going against the trend if that happens because teams still start three Canadian offensive linemen. So least. the Bombers do have the option of trading up in this draft if they possibly can with Saskatchewan's first pick reportedly available and there's lots of other picks in between. Kyle Walters at least uh, late last month was talking like he didn't feel like there was a necessity to trade up yeah. because there was so much movement with the NFL players who were drafted and, and signed as undrafted free agents and, and just, you know, there's just, he thinks it's a deep draft and there's going to be yeah. something available for them at 9 and 10 without making a trade. Right. And, you know, as we said, the O-line thing could change if they if they feel that they can find... They are, they are going to get good players at 9 and 10 because he says there's probably 20 good players in this draft who can probably be playing within a year. Yeah. So, yeah, they are going to get good players. And and it, it's, almost, it's one of those years where you, there is no clear-cut number one. Yeah. So that kind of makes teams not really need to trade up you know yeah. if there's going to be trades it's going to be teams going maybe from the third or fourth round packaging a few picks there and trying to get into that second round the bombers pick at number 19 and that's kind of right on the cusp of guys who might be able to come in and start right or special teamers so right. who knows maybe the bombers because of those five guys who are either drafted or signed undraft undrafted free agent deals that kind of bumps the bombers out of getting one of those guys at 19 so yeah. maybe they make a trade there and move up you know 15 14 kind of thing so that's so much could happen and there will be trades there always are these guys trade like crazy on draft day so 
Well, some people have predicted, into. indeed, some people have predicted that six offensive linemen are going to go in the top eight. Yeah. And they go on in runs. In the first round. And if that does happen, that's going to be tough on, on Kyle Walters. But yeah. as you said, they'll take the best player available. They, they don't want to go off the board. Yeah. Um, just uh, your thoughts on who you think is going to go first overall in a, in a year when uh, it could be a lot of different yeah, players. It could be a ton of players. Uh, Josiah St. John, the uh, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma, seems like the guy with the most physical attributes to play. He could play tackle. He played tackle at Oklahoma. Uh, he was a stud at tackle in uh, in junior college in the U.S. and can obviously play guard as well if needed. He's a behemoth of a man and and he can do a lot of things. So I think if Saskatchewan holds on to that pick, they, they still will take him because I think he is the best player available and he can play a couple of positions. So I think that's the guy. And, uh, and once one offensive lineman goes, then they usually all go. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, like you say, if, if they do start with Josiah St. John, the Bombers could be looking at someone else. And we both agree that that could be problematic for them. If they just don't get an yeah. impact offensive lineman this year, that's one area of their team that, that hasn't really improved on paper from last season. Right. And it's the one area that really needs to improve. Right. And it won't, I don't think it'll necessarily improve this year if they get that guy because it does take time to make the adjustment. But, you know, if they show some progress this year, they can say, oh, yeah, we have this good young offensive lineman coming in next year. Uh, Soup Chung only signed a, a two-year deal. That's another thing to think about. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, this is, a, like you said, right off the top, this is a big one for the Bombers. Absolutely. It will be very interesting to see on Tuesday night, the CFL draft. Kirk and Penton and myself will be there, and we'll have a post-draft report for you. We will. We will. For Kirk Penton, I'm Ted Wyman. Enjoy the draft.